Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a family lugger behind me in the form of a 5 Series G31 Touring and in this video I'm going to go through how this car performs as a family lugger. Now this one is a 530E, it's the first time I've actually got a hybrid on the channel and for me it's probably the first time I've spent so long driving a hybrid as well so it's going to be a full on impressions and a review vid on this 530E. So first of all let's go and have a quick walk around on this car. The G31 530E X Drive in M Sport spec. It's quite a basic M Sport. It doesn't have many packs on it, so hence why you've got the chrome grills. It does have the 18 inch alloy wheels, and I must say that from this angle here, it does look like it's got quite a bit of a presence. It is quite a large car, but yeah, we're going to talk about the whole spec on this car in itself. This is a hybrid, hence why we have electrified by I. But overall, I think. This being the LCI, it has got some real nice sort of touches around the car as well. And the side profile here, typical BMW, you know, you've got like a long bonnet on the front, you've got short overhangs on the front as well, and it's got a real nice kind of profile being a 5 Series Touring. I do like the rear end of this 5 Series Touring because you've got these nice LCI rear lights, which kind of go into like the, the boot. Nice roof spoiler, not too aggressive there. And BMW keeping it real with some real exhaust trims. Now I'm going to try and open up the boot of this car just to kind of show you how big this thing is. And yeah, I mean this being a hybrid, it is a little bit compromised but you still got probably about 560 litres of space here as well. Underneath here, you've got some electric gubbins. Wipes. But there you go. I think you can also lower the rear seats from there as well. The push of a button. That's quite a nice touch. They don't lie completely flat. So you have got a bit of a ledge there. But I suppose that's not too bad at all. And if you're looking at it from here, it is quite a, a big size boot. If you move into the back area of the car, you've got the back seats. Looking at this, you don't have much sort of leg room for instance. I mean... That's in my driving position. I'm about five foot seven, so not the tallest guy, but that doesn't look like there's a lot of space there. That seat there has been pushed all the way back. So, yeah, I mean, it is a five series. It's based on a saloon. I'm just surprised, like, there doesn't seem to be much space there. I did used to have a F10 five series, probably about 10 years ago. That seemed to have a bit more space, I don't know why, but that to me just doesn't look like there's a lot. Anyway, let's move into the driver's area. So on the interior of the 5 Series, this interior has been lifted slightly for the LCI. I think there's probably a little bit more gloss work that's going on here. You've got a bigger screen. This isn't the latest iDrive, I think this is the same as what you had in like a G20 3 series pre LCI so you've got like a smaller driver's display here but it does like kind of work quite well I mean some of you guys might be preferring this compared to like the massive screens on the later cars that I had on the G23 series as well as the M240i this bit here does look quite dated because there's a lot of physical buttons some ways it's probably a good thing other ways it just looks a bit busy whereas now they're all kind of you know integrated into like the whole iDrive system this not being like a high spec 5 series you do have like a bit of a tray here where you've got cup holders you don't have any wireless charging and that tray there is actually quite small i mean my phone doesn't even fit in there so it's kind of pointless having that you have got an eight speed set of gearbox in there you've got the rotary controller for the main screen over there and obviously being a 
hybrid you've got some bespoke hybrid buttons here so electric hybrid and sport and some battery buttons here now for me this is like i said like a first hand experience driving a hybrid i've been in like hybrid taxis and stuff like that obviously i don't drive any of them but actually driving a hybrid is going to be my first kind of like first hand experience and hopefully i'll portray that across to you guys i think one thing that i do notice in this car is that these seats for example they are quite nice they're not actual leather so this is like a man-made type of leather it does feel quite kind of coarse as well in a way it's certainly not as nice as let's say my a7 was with that leather that was volcano leather and that was far better in terms of quality so point to note on these seats they are electrically operated but they're partial you've got quite a few adjustments here like you've got the bolstering you've got the lumbar you've got the backrest you've got the seat itself that you can raise but you can't pull it forward for that you've got some manual adjustment which i just find really odd in something like this the overall kind of dash design here now is looking a bit dated you have got kind of soft touch materials on the dash here which is quite nice and squidgy and on the door tops but this doesn't feel as nice as it did in the a7 so i think that the interior of this car is now beginning to look a bit dated but the new 5 series is already out and i think that's kind of pushed the bar quite high in terms of the way that car looks from inside now one thing that this car i think should have had as a bare minimum as even as a standard feature or even as an option is a panoramic glass roof because this car has got quite a dark headlining and it's quite dark in here even though you've got some brushed aluminium type of like materials used it does feel quite dark in here the windows are not tinted which is probably a good thing so that you are getting quite a bit of light in there but if the windows were tinted i think it'd be really like dark in here which would have just spoiled the ambience in this car so from what i can see this m sport isn't a highly spec one there's not many optional packs on it for like for example there's no hk sound there's no head-up display there's no adaptive suspension it's a bare basic 530e x drive m sport it does have some blue calipers which do look quite nice give it a bit of road cred so what i'm going to do now is talk to you guys about like say the engine the battery the transmission the performance and all of that stuff and then i'm going to head out onto those country lanes so the engine on this 530e is a two liter four cylinder petrol engine with an electric motor combined power and torque are 290 odd horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque which i think is plentiful for this it's fitted with an eight speed zf automatic gearbox and four wheel drive 0 to 16 this is something in the region of about 6.1 seconds and it'll go on to do like a top speed of about 140 miles an hour so guys one thing to know is don't be fooled by the official mpg figures for this car officially this car will do 157 miles per gallon but you're not going to get anywhere near that because to get that figure you've got to be driving this car mainly in electric mode this car will do like about 30 miles of electric range only and that's based on you keeping that 20 kilowatt battery topped up most of the time you're going to run out of that battery you're going to be running on petrol and you're probably going to get anything up to about 40 miles per gallon really so that's the true thing about these kind of plug-in hybrids unless you are actually plugging in the car regularly and driving on electric power your actual range and your mpg is going to be far less than what the official stats say so let's give it a start up another button there and essentially that's what you get there is no engine sound because it's just started up on the battery now interestingly here i've got zero range of battery but i can still drive the car in hybrid mode because it will self-charge the battery to a bare minimum and along the way the engine will kick in when i accelerate a little bit harder but i'm actually now although i'm not in any gear i'm in park i can actually drive away from from here and it's bizarre because the car's not actually making any noise whatsoever so hybrids and electric cars were primarily introduced for company car drivers i mean most company car drivers would probably spec an electric car now or a hybrid of some sort and the reason for that is because of the benefit in kind tax so for example if this was a 520d your benefit in kind tax on that would be probably about double what you'd pay on this so it makes perfect sense for those type of drivers having said that you can only now get like the new ones in like petrol 
or electric form anyway you might even be able to get like an odd diesel somewhere but I'm not too sure about that but what I do like about a 5 series in this touring form is you can actually use this to quite a lot of capacity like in that what I mean is you have got a decent sized boot in there you have got you know like quite a bit of space in the back so if you got like sort of young kids and whatnot they'd be absolutely fine in this and this thing actually drives like a 5 series rather than an SUV I mean do you really need an SUV you know I'd rather have a touring to be honest because it just looks a bit more like car like as well and you don't need to go down the whole kind of having an SUV for the sake of having an SUV so the 530e what is it like then so I've had this car now for a couple of days and I've been driving around in this and I must say that I haven't really seen my range drop as much in the way I would expect it to drop let's say if this was a full-on petrol derivative I mean the engine is like off a 520i it's got an electric motor to it it's got 290 odd horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque and that's quite a lot on like a day-to-day -day basis you go around it's you know kind of usual business without much effort I haven't really even seen the range drop by much because of the hybrid system and the way it works I haven't plugged it in because I don't have a plug-in charger at home and I can't be bothered to go and get it plugged in and wait I don't know two three hours for a full charge so from that point I've just been running it in the way it's been run that's the thing unless you are actually going to be plugging this car in all the time you know you are not going to benefit from let's say the full uh, potential benefits of having a hybrid system one thing I have noticed is that when I'm just driving around you don't have to uh, like brake as much because there's a lot of brake region that it does itself you just take your foot off the accelerator and you can feel the motor in reverse and regenerating the battery and that probably helps keeping that battery charged for that electrified drive it is quite seamless when like say the petrol engine kicks in and takes over right now I'm driving in petrol power only and it actually feels quite a nippy car and although this is 170 odd kg heavier than like a equivalent petrol 520i let's say for example in touring form it doesn't feel that heavy because you've actually got more power and the electric motor you've got the instant torque on that so it does feel quite nimble as well I am a bit disappointed the fact that the boot on this thing can be bigger than what it actually is because obviously you've got a battery pack on, under the boot floor and that eats away into like say the, the boot area so the comfort levels in this car are pretty good I mean these seats for example I'm not too happy about the kind of material that they're using on there it doesn't feel like leather it just feels a bit odd but there's quite a nice amount of cushioning within the seats because I think you do feel like they're not as firm and the damping I think even though this is running on like say steel springs it does a good job about you know anticipating potholes and undulations in the road and stuff and that's partly because you have got smaller alloys on there you've got 18 inch wheels and those with like say the steel damping it's a it's a decent let's say trading rather than having like say big wheels and like having a crashy ride so I think from that point it's pretty good it's quite a refined car as well uh, from what I can tell from behind the wheel here it's I'm probably running in electric mode right now so it's uh, yeah it, it's not making any noise and just like you get a bit of road noise from the tires maybe and that's about it So since I've been driving this car I've not really felt like the need to drive this thing fast I think one thing when you are driving a hybrid and maybe this is just me this is playing with my head here I'm trying to maximize the amount of miles I can get out of like the electric range so it becomes like quite a different type of I don't know motive driving like an electric or a hybrid because you're trying to maximize how much range you can get from the electric motor and not use the fuel because essentially you've got a quite a small fuel tank in this thing as well you've got like a tank that's under 50 liters in a 5 series I mean usually these things come with like a 70 liter or a 75 liter tank and this has this has got something like a 46 liter tank or something like that so you don't want to constantly just be at the petrol station filling up you want to maximize the whole range using the electric as well it's a very different way of driving right I'm gonna just put my foot down a little bit here 
petrol engine did kick in, you got that boost from the electric motor and before you know it I went from like doing 12 miles an hour to like just over 40 in a 50 zone so yeah it picks up really well so I have noticed that when you do plant your foot and the engine kicks in this is obviously a four cylinder engine so you are going to get quite a bit of like a four pot grunt I'll give you like a little example of that now but again you know like before you know it you're up to speed really quick in this and it does feel really refined as well and i think that's what i like about the 5 series it is quite a refined car you know like the whole insulation around it and you know the way it's all damped and this in like say a 5 series touring i think it's a perfect family lugger so i'm going to conclude now on my thoughts around this 530e i think it does make sense like say from a company car point definitely private buy would you go out and buy these it'll be interesting to see what the used market's like right now because they are going to be quite a few let's say hybrids now on the market as opposed to let's say full-on petrol and diesel cars so this is probably going to be up there you might even get a better deal buying one of these things because i think that dealerships are struggling to actually flog like electric cars or hybrids or whatever so you know this might even be cheaper to buy i don't know that's my kind of take on it from what i can see what's going on at the moment it does make sense because you have to got a petrol engine you're not going full electric and you can get decent economy and performance out of something like this would i go and buy this i'd probably buy this over let's say an suv for the sake of just having an suv because everyone's got one i'd rather have like a touring it's just as practical as an suv you don't get the lofty driving position but you get a car that actually drives like a car rather than something that you know is a bit of a bus i'm still on the fence about the hybrid systems kind of thing whether you know how long they're gonna last or the longevity of like the electric motors and all of that and the battery pack but if tilt is something to go by they've been doing like you know hybrids for many many years and and decades and i think the reliability is there so yeah i mean this is something that i might even consider in the future alongside like say my performance car or something like that just to bring my fuel bills down but hey i hope you have found this informative if you have give it a like share subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already because that helps me do more vids like this as well and hopefully guys i'll see you on the next one take care bye